Hello, welcome to Code Zero, a series of videos that explores the world of code. My name is Pragma. Have a great time learning about code. Hello, it's Dr. Abstract here at ZimJS.com, and thank you for that introduction, Pragma. In the last couple Code Zeros, we went off and talked about all sorts of things. So let's dig back into the code now and see where we left off. All right. Oh, yes, we had made a circle and we put the circle on the stage. So if you missed that Code Zero, you should pop back. We talked about where these words come from, circle and stage. And we talked about a thing called abstraction, which helps us uh, be lazy and do things more efficiently, more easily, which is good because we all want to save time. So why rebuild things over and over again? So now we're back in the code, and I did promise that we would try some more things, like how we could drag the circle. Oh yeah, that would be fun. And I think it would be about time to show you where all of the things we can do, where, where all those are listed. And that's called the documentation. So let's just do a drag quickly to get us back in the code, and then we'll pop out and take a look at the documentation, and we'll to talk about how to read that documentation and understand what's going on there. Because that can be very helpful. All right, so here's our circle, and it's a new Zim circle. Now, uh, we've changed its color to red, fine. Uh, let's just take a look at that. I suppose we'll view that in a browser, so open in a browser. And we'll bring our browser over into view. Whee! <laughs> there it is. So we have a red circle there. If we were to click on that, it doesn't drag. Oh, well, we wouldn't really expect it to. We didn't say, you know, we don't want everything that we put on the stage there to drag. So we'd have to tell it to drag. And that looks like this. Circle. So we say the name of the object that we want to drag. We use the dot syntax. And then we... It would say the method, and a method has two round brackets after it. So a method is something, it's, it's an action. So when you can do something to an object, or when the object can do something, like run or play, um, those types of things. Okay, so here we are saying circle.drag, and we end the statement with a semicolon. So let's save that. We save it, we come back to our browser, we do a refresh, and now, watch when we roll over the circle. Oh, it's giving it the finger there. Look at that. And so now we can drag it. We can just pick that up and drag it. We can drag it off the stage. Uh, there is a way that we can set the bounds of how far we can drag it. But that's neat that we can just drag right away. And the last time we talked about abstraction, I tell you, in the HTML world, uh, there was a time when we couldn't drag very easily in the HTML world. I'm talking like 200 lines of code, and this was just the most complicated code you would ever see. That's unbelievable. Big, huge, long lines of code. <laughs> Anyway, we took that away and made that much easier. I think it's easier to do on the canvas than it is in traditional HTML anyway. But there you go. That's a drag. Super duper. Now, we did promise you that we would see, well, you know, how do we know what other words? Uh, if I wanted that ball to bounce, can I just go circle dot bounce? You know, can we make things up? Uh, unfortunately, we can't quite make things up even though it sounds like I might be doing that because I said, let's drag the circle. <laughs> I already knew that dragging the circle was available for us. So let's go see what we're allowed to uh, say. We'll go to the Zim site now, zimjs.com. And there's the docs section right there. So the docs section is on Pragma side. She's very practical. And if you want to just get down and see what, you know, what code you can use, there it is in the docs. And remember, there's the learn section too, which talks more about uh, when and where and gives you examples. Okay. So let's go into the docs. Plidink. Here it is. And it's a listing of all of the words that we can use. And it's organized. Uh, these are the short little ones like Zog. That lets us log to the console without saying console.log. So those are little short ones. Let's not worry about that right now. 
Here's a bunch of ones that help with code, like how to shuffle an array, which is a list of things, or make a random number, which is really cool. And these, uh, these commands work without Zim and without CreateJS. They just work with code all by itself. Okay, so uh, there's a bunch of those. Then there's the ones that relate specifically to Zim and CreateJS and our canvas. And they're called display. They're the things that we can see. We can see containers, shapes, bitmaps, that's an image. A sprite is like an animation. Um, here's some ones that you might recognize. A circle, rectangle, and triangle, and the blob. Those are the shapes. And then a bunch of components, like a label, and a button, and a checkbox etc 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 some of those you might recognize if if you've worked with interactive works before you, you might have tried a slider um, others uh, they're fun there a lot of them come from the physical world like a dial do you see the dial right here and so any one of these has information behind it as well that tell you what you can do with the dial like make it a have a minimum and a maximum and how much to step and so forth and not only that, but you can open these up. However, before we open them up, let's just take a look at the rest of the documentation. So we scroll down. So those were the, the components and the shapes and stuff that we can see. And here are those things called the methods. Methods are uh, the actions that we can do with them. So here's where we find drag, for instance. You may have heard of the word method in the English language. What method did you use to do that? Hmm, you know, it's almost a, it's a little bit of a scientific sounding word, isn't it? <laughs> but anyway, that's a method. It's a, uh, yeah, it's a little bit of a strange word. Uh, some places call it action, or some coding languages call them actions. That might uh, be a bit more familiar. But in the traditional object-oriented programming, which is what all of this is, uh, OOP, O-O-P, um, we call them methods, methods, and then we also have properties. So uh, if we scroll down, here's some more methods. We can find out when things are hitting. We can animate things. We can wiggle things. We can uh, loop through things. We can scale and, and center and place and, and so forth. So there's, uh, you know, a couple dozen methods. So all of these methods will work on all of these display objects. So if we make um, a slider, we could, <laughs> we could potentially drag the slider. I mean, we want to just usually sliders stay, this, stay in the same place. So maybe that's a bad example, but we could, we can certainly add, add this. Uh, um, we can uh, center the slider on the stage, which is a good thing, you know, so that's something that we can do with it from down here with the center. Now, after that, there's the controls. So these are things that sort of act overall on our on what we're building on our system. There's a ticker which um, goes really fast and allows us to animate. It's like a little engine. Um, there's the ability to do accessibility, to swipe things, to store things in different pages and go from one page to another. Get these hotspots so we can click on things. Um, apply grids and guides. I think we saw the the guy or the grid before. Lay things out so that they stretch properly and adapt or respond to the size of the website. Um, and some fun things like parallax and uh, motion controllers and game pads and emitters. Emitters a particle emitter and animating to sound wave. Is noise in there? I don't see. No oh, noise must have been up in the code. Yeah, that's right. We just added noise uh, as a neat way to animate to things. Then there's ZimFrame right here, which sets up our framework. Uh, and, and that says how to scale our stage to fit the browser window. And also, Frame also gives us ways to bring in uh, images and sound and, and that kind of stuff. There's some other things too which help with Zim, but we won't worry too much about those. Those are meta 
All right. Now, we were talking a little bit about dial way up here. Oh, sorry, that's probably really, really small for you, isn't it? Silly me. But being small, we can see more of it all at once. And I was reading it to you, so hopefully you're okay. So now we've increased the size of that, and we were talking about a dial. So where'd the dial go? There it is right here. And what we can do is just click on it, and then it will open up. There's my scroll thingy. So it reminds you about these things called the parameters that we can pass in. And these parameters allow us to tell the dial extra information. How wide is it? What color will it be? Et cetera, et cetera. There's a whole bunch of them. And they sometimes get a little bit specific and, and fiddly. All right. But uh, the most popular ones usually show up here in the front. They're probably the ones that you might use. It talks about what the dial is, that it's a Zim class, and being a class, you can make an object from it. Any of these words that start with a capital letter, like a dial does, you then can make an object from it. So the class is like a template. Imagine ingredients for making a cake. It's not the cake, but it's how it's made. And so that's what the class is. All of this stuff is how it's made. And then later, if we want to make a dial, we use the new keyword. So we say, please give me a new dial. Oh, here it is right here. There it is. Give me a new dial. And then we get to make a dial object from it. Isn't that neat? And we can make things with these parameters. And if we just look down a little bit, there's a description. A traditional dial will give values back based on min and max. So if you change the dial, you can get values. Here's a description of what the parameters do. So you can read about that to find out what you should pass in to the dial each time there's a default. So if you don't pass a minimum, it assumes that the dial will start at zero. If you don't pass a maximum, it assumes that the dial will start or will go up until 10. Okay? So every single every single function and every single uh, method and every single uh, object or class gets all of this description. Okay? This type of description. It says what you can do with the dial, just a couple of things in terms of methods, but you can also do all of these specific ones. I think we're getting a little bit detailed. I just wanted to kind of get you started with the Zim Zero, Zim Zero or Code Zero. Just get you started knowing where you can look for these things rather than go into each thing in, in too much detail. Then we have a set of properties. So these are things that are of interest for us. This one especially, the current value. So as we change the dial, we can find out its current value property. And it might say seven, and it might say eight. And then we can do things with that. We could make a circle bigger or smaller, or we could turn up the sound or turn down the sound, that, that kind of thing. A dial is good for that. There's also events. So objects, any object has a, um, properties, methods, and events. Those are the three main things that we deal with. And the event for the dial is a change event. So when the dial changes, it will call a function for us. We, we, can, we can ask, please, hey, tell me, tell me dial, when you change, please call this function. And then we can do something in the function, like I said, um, such as change the sound. So why don't we do that in, in the next code zero? I think this code zero is good to sort of get you excited about uh, that. Um, we saw a drag. We've seen the documentation. And to tell you the truth, Pragma has just arrived home from university. So I <laughs> really want to cut this off here and go see how Pragma is doing. This is Dr. Abstract here at Zim. Have a great day from Code Zero. Woohoo! Ciao.